Hi everyone, my name is Mark Duiker, Senior Developer Advocate at AP, where we enable developers to build live and collaborative experiences. In this video, I'll compare two cloud PubSub services, Azure Web PubSub and Ably. I'm a fan of both Azure and Ably, and usually I create content to highlight how well they can work together, how they can complement each other. But ever since Azure announced a Web PubSub, uh, I was really eager to do a comparison between Web Ops Up and AB. So a couple of days ago, I wrote quite an extensive blog post uh, comparing Azure Web Ops Up versus AB, and I focused on the developer experience there. So how easy is it to use their API? How easy is it to create the, the, the cloud resources? Um, so I'll put the link in the description and I highly recommend you to read it. Um, what I did, uh, to make the comparison, I created a demo application and I created two versions of that. I created one version with Azure Web Pops Up and the other version I created with AB. And the demo application is a collaborative pixel art drawing app. So whenever you go to this website, I will also include the link in the description, um, you can click the connect button and you can draw on a canvas and whoever is connected to that same canvas will see your mouse movement and it will see your clicks. So you can uh, make some pixel art together. So this diagram shows the architecture of the, of the demo. So um, clients move their mouse and click on the canvas and you can also change their color scheme. And all these events are then um, sent to the uh, Cloud pops up service. In this case, it's Ably, but in the other version, it's Azure Web pops up. And all these events are then published to other connected clients. So most of, most of the communication is done from client to another client with only the Cloud pops up service as an intermediate. Then there are some other um, functionalities, for instance, retrieving the authentication URL for the pops up service, and that's handled via an Azure function. Um, and also changing of the color palette is done through an Azure function. And that was done just to get a feel uh, what the developer experience is to publish something from um, a backend instead of a frontend. So the blog post that's shown here on the left, by the way, uh, compares the two services on the seven aspects. Uh, but in this video, I will highlight just the three biggest differences. And that's creating the cloud resource, creating a client-side connection and presence. So let's start with creating the cloud resource. So for Azure, um, you need to create a resource group and Azure services are usually tied to a specific region. So whenever you create a new um, web PubSub, web PubSub instance, and you need to specify a resource group, you give it a resource name, and you have to specify a region. So that's quite different compared to Ably. When you create an Ably app in the Ably dashboard, you only need to specify a name and tick a checkbox to indicate if SSL is required, but you don't have to specify a region because it's multi-region by default. Another large difference is how the client-side connection is working. So for Azure Web Pops Up, it uses the native WebSocket API. And you'll see the code snippet here. Uh, first, we're calling the Azure function and we're submitting some uh, information like the hub name, the group name, and the user ID. Uh, we get back a client URL and we create a new instance of the web uh, socket uh, here by providing the client URL and also specifying a sub protocol. And that sub protocol is necessary because we want to do uh, client to client communication. We're not using any upstream servers or any webhooks. Um, and all the rest of the communication uh, with Azure Web Pops Up is done via this WebSocket. Eh? We, can, we can send via this WebSocket and we can receive via this WebSocket instance. With Ably, it's quite different because Ably uses a client SDK. So it does use WebSockets, but that's abstracted away from you. And if WebSockets are not available, it can also choose other types of transports, other types of protocols. So, um, but the structure, however, is the same. So first you, you need to specify um, an authentication URL and provide a user ID. Uh, in this case, we can also specify that we don't want to echo messages back uh, from the client. And then a new instance is created of the Ably real-time uh, object. 
uh, once we have that object, so this is our AV client, uh, we then need to access the channels object of that client. And that's done in this second snippet. Uh, so we are uh, retrieving a channel, then we just provide a channel by name. And in this case, we're also specifying that we are uh, rewinding the history of the channel uh, as soon as we retrieve that channel, as soon as we're connected. And what this allows is if you're, um, let's say, arriving to a channel uh, latest, then you can actually see the, all the events that happened two minutes before that. So that, that can be quite useful. So yeah, quite a big difference between native WebSockets or um, the client SDK that AVL uses. The final thing I want to highlight is presence. And what is presence? Well, that's the information about uh, which clients are connected. Um, and Azure Web Pops Up does not offer that um, at all, uh, which is a bit of a downside. I also saw a GitHub issue about it that some people were requesting it, and it would be great if they if they will add that. Um, but this is very, really very useful if you um, want to know and you are connected to a um, uh, Web pops up instance, it would be nice if you can ask that instance, okay, uh, who are those clients that are connected and do they have any metadata associated with them? Um, so what's happening here in this um, code snippet is we are joining a group and a group is just a, another uh, collection of, uh, of connections. So we are joining a group with a specific group name um, and then we are uh, sending a, a message to whoever is part of that group. Um, and here I'm using a message type that I defined myself. Uh, it's called join message and you will transmit the user ID and the color of the uh, pixel cursor that, that we're using. So we're, we're both guessing that to, to everyone to announce that we are part of this group now. And as you can see, the no echo is not part of the setting of the connection as we saw previously with Ably, but this is part of uh, the message. So you can define on a message level if a message is echoed back to uh, the same uh, publisher or not. Um, but groups are something completely different than the than presence, right? Because with, with groups, you can't actually query who is in that group. And to illustrate the um, situation a bit more clear. I've added this sequence diagram. So let's consider the situation that we have two clients that are connecting. First client A is connecting and then client B is connecting. So what happens when client A is connecting, it sets up a connection with Azure Web Pops Up and it sends um, a message to the group that A has joined. But since A is the first one, uh, this message is not published to any subscribers because there are no subscribers. Then client B connects. It goes through the same procedure, it connects, and it also sends a message to the group that B has joined. And since there is one subscriber now, A, that message will, uh, will be received by A. So A knows that B is there, uh, but B is not aware that A is there. So what we actually need is, as soon as we are connected, we should actually should be able to query the pops up instance for um, who is a member of this group, but that's not possible at the moment. So as a workaround, what I'm doing, so in this case, B is not aware of A. So whenever some message receives from A, client B needs to know that that's a new specific client with a certain ID. So the way that I'm dealing with that is I'm just misusing another event type for that. So whenever a client hovers the mouse over the canvas, I'm also specifying uh, the client ID and the color associated with that um, pixel cursor. But I'm doing that every time uh, that client moves their uh, mouse. So I'm sending a bit too much information. It's actually redundant. I should be able to just send it once and then it should be set. Uh, so Ably natively supports presence. And what we can do then is uh, two things. We can actually subscribe to presence events. So as soon as someone enters a channel or uh, leaves a channel or updates their uh, meta information about their presence, we can subscribe to those events and that's, that's shown here. So whenever someone enters uh, in uh, the channel, uh, we can um, update our own local user collection with the data. And when someone removes, we can remove that user from our, from our local collection. Um, but 
the best thing is that we can actually query the entire presence for that channel. So what we're doing here is we're doing a presence.get and that gets a um, members collection and, and we can iterate through that collection um, and then make sure that we know about every user in that channel. So those were the three biggest differences. Uh, the blog post contains loads more information, so definitely uh, have a look at that. Um, in addition to that, there is a, a GitHub repo. Uh, this is the live demo. The link is also included uh, in the description. This is the GitHub repo, and that contains both implementations. So uh, the main branch contains the information um, about uh, Ably, and there is uh, another branch the Azure Web Pub sub branch, and that contains the implementation for Azure Web Pub sub. So please uh, check it out, uh, play with it yourself, and uh, find out which one works best for you. Until next time.